I would like to welcome you all to our today's webinar. So today uh, the topic is devoted to scan and capture. And today with me on the call, I have my colleague Jana, who is um, basically our implementation consultant, and she's ready to answer any of your questions in our Q and A chat. So feel free to post the questions throughout the uh, throughout the presentation. And as far for the agenda, so I have the following points. So first of all, for those of you who don't know fast forward just yet, let me introduce our company and let me give you a little bit a brief introduction into what we develop. So today we are talking about a suite app called Scan and Capture, which is a native add-on to NetSuite platforms. Uh, then we can also talk about the other applications that we have uh, in our portfolio, but uh, today main focus is on Scan and Capture. Um, as far as the, the process goes, so I will basically point out the key uh, things as a takeaway, what are the key differences for our application, you should remember, and then I will explain you to the, pro uh, the process for, from the end user perspective. So what steps need to be taken in order to have scan and capture active in your account. After the demo, which will take most of the time, I will talk about the implementation steps, so what is expected from your end, uh, what needs to be in place in order to have the application installed. And then we can talk about the pricing structure. So uh, that would be towards the end. Uh, as mentioned, there is a time for a Q&A. So I can come back to a couple of those questions that you already had that will Jana uh, you know, point, point out to me. And throughout the presentation, she will answer them uh, in the chat. So it seems that uh, we have almost everybody on the call. So I would like to start with my first topic, which is the introduction about Fast4. Uh, so Fast4 is uh, basically NetSuite implementation partner, the biggest one in the Benelux region. But the other side of our business is that we are developing those mentioned suite apps. So uh, we are a partner of NetSuite in the Suite Cloud Development Network, and we've been doing so since 2014. Uh, the key takeaway for you today is that the suite app is a native solution. It's been built for NetSuite and NetSuite only. We don't work with any other ERP system. And basically it means for the user that for using scan and capture, bank rec, credit card import, you always stay 100% of the time in NetSuite. You don't switch your, um, you don't switch the view to any third party tool. Uh, we are developing our applications based on our customers request. So one thing you will notice is that 2021 uh, is an absolute focus on scan and capture. So we are adding more and more functionalities uh, throughout the year. And for the existing customers of ours, you will be notified on any other upgrade, let's say, are automatically pushed into your NetSuite environment. So you don't need to undergo a new implementation just because of that edit feature. Um, so let's talk about uh, some customers of ours. So uh, who are the, uh, you know, the, some, you can see some big names here fame, uh, that, you know, are, uh, we, we proudly call them our customers. Uh, but basically any type of NetSuite business using NetSuite uh, can benefit from the application. Doesn't matter if it's a startup or scale up or already, um, you know, a, a big corporation. Uh, the the focus of the application is to save you time with manual entry. So no matter if you receive 50 invoices a month or 50,000, what we focus on is to get your invoices booked in automatically without your users to need, needing to do any manual entry there. So this would be the, the brief introduction. So let's uh, jump straight to the application itself. So um, I already spoke about the key focus of the application, which is the reduced entry and improving the accuracy. Um, since it is managed natively, it's very easy to learn and very easy to adapt. So our implementation uh, times are uh, in um, a couple of weeks. Uh, usually we suggest between two to four weeks time. And what you is really good to know for you as a NetSuite user is that scan and capture can enhance any of your cost, uh, any of your existing NetSuite setup. Things like if you developed specific custom fields or developed a specific workflows in your NetSuite environment, our solution will be fully compatible with that. 
So what you should remember about Skin and Capture is the fact that we show you the document, the PDF documents that we process for you in a split screen view. So on your NetSuite screen, you see right side, which is the, uh, the bill record in NetSuite and left side is the PDF file attachment. For those businesses that are currently using a purchase order in their AP processes, we can help you with pointing out any type of uh, differences or mismatches between your POs, item receipts, and the vendor bills itself. So this is uh, an add-on to what NetSuite already offers, whereas we are telling this to the user before the bill actually gets saved. So how does it actually work? What are the steps? needed in order to get the process up and running. So what we do is basically ask the customer at the beginning about the way how they receive their vendor bills. And we basically work with two types of business. So first, they would receive typically vendor bills and, P and credits as PDF files, and it would be attached to an email. Some would still receive paper invoices, and then they have somebody in the company who would be converting them to a PDF file format, would have it as a digital copy. Also, we work with a second type of business that are receiving or sending out the so-called invoices. So the invoices are uh, on the rise. We really see this is the future, but this would be maybe 10% of the, the, the projects that we're currently running. Uh, for you, it's good to know what an invoice, in, uh, invoice actually is. It is an exchange of data between customers and vendors where two accounting systems are communicating. And the exchange of data flows over a network. So it's not, there's no uh, person in between that would be generating a, a file, sending it over email, another person typing in the data. So let's focus on the, on the PDF itself, because I believe this is the majority of, um, of examples that our customers share with us. And for the future, we are also planning a separate session on invoicing um, uh, in general. So when you received such a bill in your inbox, what we would do is that we configure email plugins uh, for the users to shift or forward the bills into NetSuite environment. That email plugin has the embedded information about the subsidiary this bill should be linked to. From the, uh, from the NetSuite environment, where do we store the file? We store it in your file cabinet. And then we have scripts that are taking care of the push and pull of data to and from the scanning, scanning engine. So in the scanning phase, what is happening is that we are reading out the file and we are trying to figure out if we can match it to a vendor in your NetSuite environment. We are looking at line level details. We are looking at things like document numbers, document day, uh, the, the date of creation, uh, and, and some other fields that I'm going to show you in my demo. So users job in this case is to validate the details. We give a suggestion of what might be a bill and a credit, and you basically can define any other action items. So what I mentioned earlier, if you defined any specific workflows that should be running on the bill records, our solution is compatible with that. If you define specific mandatory fields on the records, again, you don't need to worry about this not being compatible because we will take it into consideration. So from end user perspective, these are very uh, two very simple steps, sending the, the bill with the plugin and coming to NetSuite to verify what was captured. And I would like to show this to you in my, uh, in my demo environment. So I'm going to stop share, showing my presentation and I will just share my screen with you. So um, on the screen, you should be able to see my home dashboard. So I'm just gonna quickly switch Apologies. Uh, quickly switch to my home dashboard of NetSuite and you will be able to see that the first thing I have here is a reminder of 27 purchase transactions to be processed. As I mentioned to you, at this point, this is not having any impact just yet until the, the, uh, your user basically reviews. The scan and capture portlet here is a custom one that comes together with the bundle. So under your preferences, you would see it under the suite app section. This portlet shows me some interesting info. So what I see here is an actual, uh, I will just refresh this because I've been processing a couple of bills. So we'll see here the total amount of bills and credits. 
you will see here where my process might have failed for a certain reason. If I click into this bubble, you will see that the number one reason for the failure is user not using the plugin properly. So the expectation is that there is an attachment, at least one. It could have been you know, multiple attachments. Uh, however, when there is no file attached, therefore we cannot store any file in the file cabinet. And from the file cabinet, the script cannot do its job, which is pushing and pulling the data in and out from the scanning engine. So here's the folder where all my invoices would be. And that script was not successful. That's why, that's why we see this failed incoming. Uh, you also see here the bubble for process this month. This is for your own review. And it's good to mention the pricing structure already here. So how we work is basically not uh, with a fixed fee by user. It's not a fixed fee by a number of subsidiaries. It purely depends on your actual usage. So every month we will check how many pages have you processed with the application. So you can have a, a nice uh, overview per month basis. And then this this would be the, the actual cost for, for the solution. Since I also have this invoicing in place, you also see that I've been sending out uh, three invoices. So I acted as a vendor and I was sending invoices to my, to my customers. And you will also see a notification here on the site if this process might have failed in the first place. So uh, in this one, the reason was that the customer has actually rejected the bill because they were not, um, they were not happy. It's just a test file, so it's been registered by, uh, rejected by business. So our primary focus today is on this incoming queue. So let me get into the bubble. And to NetSuite users, this is known as a safe search, right? So I basically narrowed down the database to see certain details. So uh, in a safe search, good news, you can edit it. So this is how, the, uh, how it comes out of a box. But one thing, for example, I added to my view is this memo field. How I'll use it is especially if you have many team members working with this overview, you would like to put a, put a note here about perhaps don't process this right away. I am still clarifying about a point. So you can add additional notes and this could be visible to your other team members. This safe search can be also um, adjusted. So for example, you can add additional filtering by perhaps amount. Here I have the ones uh, out of a box. So I'm filtering down by subsidiary. So if I only wanted to see bills uh, for my Dutch subsidiary, I can have them displayed. If I wanted to search down only by the vendor, then I can just display bills by, uh, by vendor. Um, you will also see here, I would just get to the all because I wanted to show some of the other examples is that there is this show inactivated re record option. So what it basically means is that every green line is giving me the option to process or reject a bill from this queue. Rejection reason, what it could be. Um, perhaps I have currently a dispute over the currency that is being used, or maybe I have a dispute over a due date things like this. So I reject it from this active queue. Maybe we can just uh, pick this uh, Deutsche Telekom example. And if you reject it, it is basically not disappearing forever. It's just not appearing as, you know, built to be processed right away. And there's another side of it that I can just go to. And here I will see the option to activate. So all the bills that have been previously rejected for those, um, you know, disputes reason, can be later on brought back to the active queue for, the, for your attention. So no need to resend it to the OCR again. This was the point I was trying to make. So uh, I was speaking about green status. So everything is perfect. I know what type of document it is, could have been bill or could have been a credit. I know that my vendor is matched. So the, the step in the scanning station basically was successful, right? So it was reading out the PDF file against the data in your NetSuite, and it was able to find out the vendor by its address mentioned in the bill, by the, um, the other identifiers could be bank details, the other one text ID. So there are some unique parameters that we always double check within your NetSuite environment against the document that can uh, help us with the, with the match. However, 
in some occasions you may have this yellow line. So what is missing here is the vendor itself. As a user, you would just basically go to the edit and verify the step of having or not having the vendor on the list. So here it opens a list of vendors. If you go through the list and for any reason it's missing, right? Uh, what you can do, and if your NetSuite uh, permission allows that, you can create a vendor on the fly. Again, the advantage of doing it from the screen is that you get the split screen mode. So it's easier for you to read out the data that we need. Throughout the implementation, we focus on the vendor details uh, a lot because uh, we are highly dependent on the data we see in NetSuite in order to perform this match correctly. So again, the key identifiers here would be the name, the address, bank details, uh, text ID. Uh, also, we would search the email that you forwarded to us if we can see the email domain mentioned uh, you know, from the vendor. So let's get to one of, uh, or two examples actually. I would like to start with a scenario where we have a standalone bill. So what I mean by that is order, um, the situation is that we are sourcing the items that were originally put in there. If I'm talking about a standalone bill, there is no PO link to it. So uh, the expectation is that every line that is mentioned on the invoice is going to reflect one GL account. So this one is from Germany and uh, we can just use it because the tool is basically working with up to 200 different languages. So although you are not a German speaker, you will be able to process the bills because the system is basically scanning the invoice, no matter the language, as long as it's on the list of supported languages. And it's going to place the, uh, the, the, the variety of keywords into the right field in NetSuite. So in our use case, it's looking at Rechnungsnummers, which is the German word for uh, document number, and it's going to place it in the right reference number field. Um, the amount, so again, it's looking at keywords like the total uh, volume, the total uh, amount, and it's placing it in here. With regards to currency, so um, two things that we do here. First of all, we check the vendor setup. So your vendors are typically linked to the primary um, currency of your subsidiary, but you can add additional uh, currencies to the list. So you will be here seeing that my vendor is only a link to euro. But if the document was in the US dollars, I would notify the user or the tool notifies the user here in the header about the mismatch. So it says that scanning capture captures this bill in US dollars. Your vendor is um, only allowing you euro. So it's, it's a call that you have to make as, as a NetSuite user. As said, you can add additional currencies to the list or you can reject the bill as you saw in the earlier step. So next field that you can expect is that we would search down and what is the total amount of all the taxes to be paid and two date fields. So first of all, we are looking at the document. So here is the invoicing date. And the second one is a due date. So uh, typically NetSuite would suggest to you that on your vendors, you keep track of the agreed payment terms. And this is a driver for the due date. Uh, one option you have with Scan and Capture is to opt for overwriting this value as long as it's clearly called out on the invoice. In my use case, it just says 30 days net. So I wouldn't have a clear out, a clearly called out date. Makes sense to, to put it on the vendor itself. So it's an it's a, it's a option that you can choose from. Before I go to the line level recognition, I would like to just speak a little bit more about two, uh, two fields. So this one is a custom field. It was added to my record. And this one is a standard one. So how our customers usually utilize the functionality I'm going to talk about, it's called, it's called uh, clickable PDF, is that they would copy certain values into these fields, like a standard field, like a memo. So typically in France, you would see copying periods. Or uh, another use case would be that you add some custom field like approver notes or something like this, and you would be able to copy not only one, but you know, several uh, you know, fields that are of interest to the approver. So on the header part, you can utilize this copyable function. It's called clickable PDF. 
Uh, with regards to the line level, so I said that my first example is going to refer to a standalone bill. Therefore, the account selected is actually also the expense account that I set on my vendor. You will see that the amount has been taken into account and the tax code is driven again by my uh, vendor setup. Um, you will see that the memo field here includes the description of the items that have been ordered. And because of this, we would be able to be a little bit more flexible. So what I mean by that, let's imagine I did not have one line here, but I had five lines. And each of the five lines will need to refer to a different GL account. So in order to save yourself time, you can set what we call uh, transaction line defaulting. Uh, you can either do it on a one-on-one -on -one case. So you would just come here to this, uh, this, this link and select this uh, matching rule that should be uh, applicable. Or you can do it in general. So I'm just going to switch to the screen and show you the, the options. So from my list, we can maybe pick one of those that we have uh, previously used. Let's have a look at this one. So uh, how it works is that on certain records like vendor bills or credits, Whenever you would have a matching criteria on what scan and capture captures. So in this case, it was a customer's invoice ordering um, these keys. And this was always the case for one specific vendor. But what we could have also said is to that we have a specific list of suppliers from whom we order this product. So we could select multiple. Or if you know that you can't foresee right now from which suppliers you would be ordering specific uh, items like, um, I don't know, keyboards or a mouse, you could apply this rule to all the vendors. And you can either limit them by subsidiary or apply this to all subsidiaries. And then here on this value selection page, you see the GL account. So if you wanted the system basically to remember that anytime we order skis from supplier A, in a subsidiary B, we would select the, the correct GL account. So um, not only the account, but also the additional values on the line level, like the classifications can be selected, auto-selected, let me put it this way. So you save the time by the user not having to create this, this setting every single time on each individual invoice, but you let the system do this for you. So department class locations, these are the standard, Net, uh, standard NetSuite classification fields, but we also uh, offer the additional fields and segments, especially if you have developed cer certain custom segments like projects or deals in your business where you would need to link this cost to, you can set it uh, up in your rule. So this is the transaction line defaulting, actually one of the brand new functionalities that we have worked on and uh, we have uh, deployed this. So um, I, I'm really proud of this, this solution because it saves a lot of time on, on, the end user, uh, on the end user's time. All right, so before I move to the next step, I just wanted to show you this button. So it's fair to say that Skinnik capture is an OCR. So it's based on the character recognition. We are highly dependent on the quality of the data that comes in. So if you would basically load a file that is a scan page and the scan wouldn't be really clear, we would also might we might also face the, the option that some of the values are not correctly populated. So to report to us any type of issue, um, let me give you an example, mismatch on have a currency or could have been mismatched on the amount volume because um, let's imagine the euro sign was next to the number and it was recognized as a number instead of a, a sign, uh, we would need an input from your end. So you can create these capture quality issues cases on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And what we do, we basically train the scanning engine in order to recognize these uh, cases better for the future. So again, this button is available on this bill record. Uh, let's have a look at a use case where we would not be starting the process from scratch as a standalone one, but let's talk about a purchase order situation. So from my list, I will just need to scroll down to one of those uh, examples with a PO. So you see the status has changed, PO matched. 
And this time I'm not, I'm not going to the view or process. I'm going to go into the edit. So on the edit page, um, I will start with the first example of Node Producer, where we basically can see all the available purchase orders from which we could ideally combine. So if this bill was basically mentioning multiple purchase orders, you can also link them. If they are clearly called out in here with the same number you have in NetSuite, we, the, the OCR does this for you. Um, let's imagine that they made a wrong assumption or they put just one number, but we needed the combination. You can add them clearly to the list. All the green ones basically mean that they are in the right status. So we need them to be pending billing. At least one of the lines have been received. Um, I, you will also notice that one of the POs on my list is orange or amber. And in this case, it means that the purchase order were not approved or it hasn't been received yet. So it, the system does not allow me to continue. The third coloring option I might have seen on the list is in case I had a PO that was already fully built. So NetSuite will not allow you to create a duplicate for already fully built PO. Um, let's go ahead with this one. This is the one that is mentioned and I will just go into save and process. I could have just gone through, uh, through the first page and click on the process. I will get to the same screen. Now the key difference that you will see uh, is that the header part, I'm not going to spend any, you know, I'm not going to repeat what I just told you. I will go straight to the line level recognition. So on the lines, you will see some color coding in here as well. And these color codes basically are using this traffic light system that I had in my presentation, basically telling me any type of match or mismatch between the PO and the vendor bill. So in this case, all three lines in vendor bill matches my PO. So I'm happy. I basically, as a user, I can just go ahead because I see a perfect match. If for any reason you had additional lines mentioned on the uh, on the POs that are not on the bill, we would display them to you as an additional line in blue color. How we perform the match? So we are using some validation rules for it. Uh, you can choose from a list of six rules currently. Uh, the rule I applied is a uh, invoice line quantity and amount. So both of these factors need to be in place and there has to be a perfect match between a PO and the bill in order to, for the line to turn to green. You can have a look at the other list options. So I'm just going to go to the vendor record and show you what are the other options. I need to do it from the edit mode. And we basically updated the vendor record with the scan and capture setup. So in here, you are going to see that in the general setting, I defaulted this specific rule to apply. On the list of other rules, we have a rule number one, which is double checking the total bill amounts against the PO. The rule number two is looking at the actual count of items between PO and the bill. Rule number three is looking at the, your inventory, how you name the items on the PO against the supplier invoice. So if you are keen on getting the same item codes uh, that you have in inventory, also mentioned on the invoice, this tool can perform the check for you. We saw the rule number four in action, so I'm not gonna mention it again. Rule number five is checking line level amount information and rule number six is checking rate where this rule might be handy, especially if it's some sort of service uh, or consulting uh, fee type of invoice and uh, you are opening the PO for maybe a year long service and you are just receiving the bills on a regular basis. So you are basically not receiving the full uh, bill amount. You are being charged for the actual spend hours with the consultant. Uh, so from the, uh, from the three-way match, this is what we call the three-way match, which is performed before the bill actually enters any NetSuite flow. So the user can make any edits or make any adjustments on the PO side before this, this bill is saved. I would like to show you one more bill, which is also based on a supplier um, uh, purchase, which is based on a uh, purchase order, but this time it's, um, it's a bit different. So there is a mismatch between the PO. It's not the perfect match on those amount volumes or the total bill amount. Uh, it is what we call a partial, partial billing. Uh, partial billing in a sense that 
Just note that I have introduced also a workflow that is notifying me that this uh, supplier invoice should always be linked to a PO. It's good to know. And then you will see that the amount is not matching. The reason for that is that I have here a quantity of five, which is the perform check uh, that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm basically not checking the quantities. I'm in this case, checking the rates. So let's imagine this was this consulting example, and this is the, the supplier invoice. So this is based on the PO. And I'm okay to just keep my PO open for the time being, because I'm just receiving in the, the quantity five. And I'm still pending, it's still pending to receive remaining 15 hours that were uh, included in the original uh, PO. So this rule works out, uh, it's doing its job, uh, and I'm still keeping my PO open, even if it's just a partial receipt. So um, two more things I would like to show you from within the screen, and I will go to the recap. Um, our application can be also used for not only um, processing through OCR. Uh, let me give you a typical example of why would our customers use this. So it's called a menu upload. You basically take a file that you need in NetSuite and you define the subsidiary which it should be linked to. You are utilizing scan and capture functionality, the split screen mode, and the fact that we save the, and store the file for you and link it to the record without using the OCR embedded. So from end user perspective, it saves you time, uh, especially at the end of the month and close where you see that your bill is actually, uh, you know, you're in a rush, you don't want to include the, uh, the OCR in it. And uh, this is what we call the manual type of import. Uh, what I would need to do as a user now is to populate two or three fields, the invoice number, the date, and the line level total amount, which is okay from the end user's perspective because all I really care about is that I get the functionality of split screen mode. So it's um, easier for me to process this uh, rather than using the standard NetSuite, which is just one page and you're trying to copy all the data. So this is how you can utilize Scan and Capture too. Um, the last thing I would like to show you is this audit report. So on the audit report page, what you can see as a user is any activity happening. So you just saw that I uploaded a manually a file, so it did not go through OCR. You will also see here that I, I have previously used the tool. Um, it shows me how long it took approximately for the scanning. And here you will see that what is the outcome of it. So what transaction was actually created. If I click into a couple of these examples, you will see that the scan and capture's last action item was that split screen mode is not disappearing. Anyone who comes after the AP clerk will st still see it in the split screen mode. And the communication sub tab is going to include the actual file. So here is the person reviewing and here is the file itself. So what normally would, you would need to do as a NetSuite user, you need to think about the step of attaching the originating PDF. Now, because we, we have it embedded with the email plugin to do this step, you don't need to worry about it anymore. I can open another one, another example. This one is from Oracle. And you will see that the, this communication sub tab uh, basically includes the file as well. Perfect. So from resources point of view, what I would like to maybe direct your attention to is to our new new page, uh, our new page uh, where you can see all the details about our accounts payable automation option uh, with basically summary of everything I mentioned to you, including some references to our current customers. Uh, there's a really nice documentation, a white paper that I would strongly suggest you to download and have a look at because it is um, combining all the info from today's webinar. Perfect. So in the remaining time, I would like to uh, go back to my presentation and talk about the steps of implementation, the pricing and any open questions. So. With regards to the setup, we usually suggest between two to four weeks time that you set aside to work with our consultants. 
So what we take care of is the configuration of your NetSuite environment and the scanning engine. We install the bundle, we connect the project, and we run test invoices. For the test invoices, we strongly suggest to take about five to 10 examples, some of the standard ones, maybe some of those that you think are challenging and you're receiving them on a regular basis. <clears throat> With regards to training, so the trainings are done in a way of walkthroughs where we explain the configuration, where we discuss the test results, but the majority time focused is on the testing of the application itself. Ideally, we start in sandbox so that we can allow your users to try out. We give 500 pages included with the implementation fee uh, that are covering these testing pages. The configuration of the application when you are happy with the results um, is done then in production and then you are basically live with NetSuite. The prerequisite for this to work would be to have already a defined uh, chart of accounts, the vendor, vendor record set up. Uh, so typically we would step in in a NetSuite implementation project sometime about around the UAT phase, I would say is the best time. With regards to the pricing, so there is a one-time fixed fee for the implementation itself. Uh, depending if you are implementing the OCR, uh, only invoicing or both OCR and invoicing together. And after that, as said, there is no fixed fee by user or fixed fee, uh, fixed fee monthly. Uh, so we will look at your actual scan pages. There is a discounted pricing, uh, volume pricing available. So depending on the expected amount of pages to be scanned, we can be also flexible on the pricing. So now time to have a look at, uh, at some of your questions. I will see if uh, Jana has left uh, some of the questions for me uh, as open. So Martin is asking about the price per page. So Martin, this goes back to the question, how many pages do you expect to, to process? Uh, the pricing that I have on my slide, I will just go back to it, is basically based on the zero to 1000 volumes. So it would be 30 cents per page if you are not hitting more than 1000 pages. If you are in a, in a, um, if you are in the tier 1000 to 2000, there's a different discount pricing. We are happy to share with you this, uh, this overview uh, in a table post this call. So when PDF files come in several different posts, is it possible to combine them to one attachment if it turns out they belong together? Uh, yes, so Jane, basically you can have one email sent out to NetSuite. So you use this one email plugin. As long as all the invoices are linked to the same subsidiary, you can use it in this way. Uh, then you would just need to bear in mind what is the limitation of your email. And I think we tested that that maximum 20 attachments were allowed. So if I use the email plugin for one and attach 20, 20 uh, attachments, I get 20 different lines in NetSuite. Uh, how do you manage multiple emails used? Different email by subsidiary when receiving supplier bills. So uh, basically the logic is that we are going to ask you how many subsidiaries in NetSuite do you have? And we will configure specific plugins by subsidiary. Uh, we have on the roadmap uh, an option to use one email plugin policy. So this will be especially data if you have, you know, an enormous amount of subsidiaries. I'm thinking here more than 100, perhaps. And then you would be able to, or this OCR will be doing its best to, to find the right uh, subsidiary from the scan document. Um, what is a page? Is this one PDF document or just one page of the, uh, of the PDF? So we are talking about uh, an invoice that has five pages. This OCR is basically looking at each individual page in order to identify the, the info that we need. So uh, example would be if your supplier is sending you one page invoices and the remaining four pages are terms and conditions, uh, one option is for you to split it, so you send only one page to OCR, or ask the vendor to split these two files so that you don't receive it in one. <clears throat> because the logic is the OCR needs to read everything in order to identify what is meant to be, uh, you know, populated in NetSuite and whatnot. So I guess the rest of the questions were already answered by Yana.
I will wait um, one more second if there are any additional questions that I can just uh, reflect in the demo. I don't seem I don't see any new ones coming in, so I would like to wrap up for today. Uh, thank you so much for your attendance. Uh, we are planning a few more upcoming webinars, so the next one will be hosted by my colleague Mike. So he's doing it in a US friendly time zone. So feel free to join. He's doing an introduction to AP automation uh, of scan and capture. I myself will be hosting a next webinar on Thursday 29th, which this time is devoted to credit card imports. So if you are facing the issue of reconciling credit card statements and it's taking you a lot of time, I will show you how this can be done uh, in a more um, uh, efficient way. As next steps, uh, if you like the application and you would like to learn more, uh, we are happy to organize a custom demo for you. You can email me uh, or my uh, colleagues from my marketing team, we will be able to uh, organize a specific uh, demonstration for your team. All the questions from the webinar will be put together in one summary and we will send them out to the remaining attendees. So feel free to ask if you have additional questions. So I would like to welcome you all once again for coming and listening to our demo and um, I hope to see you in one of our upcoming webinars. Thank you so much.